bought they had to pay a thousand dollars down when they bought it, they paid nine thousand for it, the bargain for it. And uh, wouldn't have been for that money, they couldn't have made it. So you, your, your, was it one thousand or, or how much was it that you? Two hundred. Yeah, yeah. Was, uh, yeah. Enough to put it up. Twenty dollars, two hundred and forty dollars. Wow. Twenty dollars a month for you. And they were friends with the Blaus in Plain, yeah. and the Blaus and your dad all found farms over here in Merrimack yeah. by the Rich Glen. Moved up here. Uh, moved up here. Blau came up, uh, visited us about two weeks later on a Sunday, and uh, he was foreclosed on his farm too, you know. Oh. But my dad was too. You know, they, they lost they their lost farms, their both of them. Yeah. What yeah. year was that? Nineteen thirty-seven. And that was during, during the Depression. depression. Everybody was losing their farms. Yeah. My, my dad, too, had a rough time making it. Yeah. You know, yeah he had, a lot of people did. He had paid $7,000 for that farm. He had it half paid for him. And uh, he was foreclosed on it. Pat Walsh had to a mortgage on it. And he left and stayed there for two years after they moved away. Huh. Yeah, we were all raised they were, very uh, poorly. Poor farms, but yeah. well, we never realized we were that poor. My mother raised a garden yeah. that just didn't quit. She canned thousands of quarts of stuff. She'd make it a gold to can about 800 to 1,000 quarts a year. What, a per Everything, year? Everything, corn, beans. She canned close oh, to 1,000 yeah. quarts every year. And wow, dill, and your mother's the same. Tomatoes, yeah. and everything. Everything and, was I mean, canned, yeah. All I had to buy was sugar and flour, and they would raise their own milk. You would know. butcher your pig, and uh -huh. they'd fry the meat down and put it in a big jar, you know, and put the lard over it. Now, that's Keep hard it. for people to understand, yeah. that, how you could yeah. be so poor. And yet, we never realized we were that poor. We didn't have a lot. Yeah. We didn't have a lot of fancy clothes or anything. I said we could hang our clothes on three or four pegs in our bedroom, and that was it. <laughs> you know, didn't need a closet at all. Yeah. <laughs> My mother would make me a couple dresses at the beginning of the school year, and, and maybe eventually... In the summer we had to run barefoot. A skirt no shoes. Or two made, and Your feet got so darn tough that the hay stubbles and the straw stubbles would bother you at all. <laughs> <laughs> so all summer you went barefoot? Barefoot, yeah. Well, we wow. did too, pretty much, you know, then. We get one pair of shoes when school started, and one of my most embarrassing memories. You put so shoes on in the fall of the year. Ah. You got blisters all over. <laughs> I gotta tell this one because when I was in second grade, I bought we got new shoes to start school. First day, wouldn't you know that one shoe, the whole side ripped out. It must have been cheapy, oh. so poorly made or something. And the next day, my mother said, "Well." We'll have to take that shoe to the shoe repairman, and today you can wear one of your old ones. So I had to wear one of my old battered up ones with my other new shoe. And I was so embarrassed, I didn't even want to go to school. But I had to go. And all day I thought, everybody was looking at my feet. It had to be, but I don't know if they even noticed. <laughs> but I sure did. <laughs> I never <laughs> forgot that, believe me. You have one new shoe and one old shoe on. So we could take time to go take that to the shoe repairman, and he sold it, and I wore it. Probably the only pair I had that year. Huh. And then when summer came, like Dad said, we either had outgrown our shoes or they were worn out, so we ran barefoot in most. <laughs> so Blouse moved up to Merrimack after your dad and your family did. A week that. later. A week later. You mean they had planned to move to Merrimack too? No? No, they, they came up. We moved up here, and that next Sunday, Blaus came up. Mm. And uh, he, was, he was losing his farm down there, you know, in Plain. And uh, my dad said Bob Marshall is talking about retiring, you know, on that farm right below there. So he went down there and talked with him, and they bought it. Wow. And then you all worked a lot on Durward's Glen, you and the Blau boys, right? Anyway, anyway, uh, uh, I remember I, I went to, we were up here about a week and then I went to work for McLeish, you know, and uh, I came home, <laughs> came, I came home on a, on a Saturday night, I was going to stay at home and all the Blau kids were all 
laying there in, on the blankets in the living room and everything, you know. They, they, had, they couldn't get into the house yet, you know, on that farm that they bought till a couple of weeks later. Uh -huh. So I went back home. I, I said, you either got to go in the barn and sleep in the hay barn or <laughs> go back home. So I went back down to the <laughs> Because the blouse were all over the floor of your yeah. farmhouse? Yeah. Oh, they were there big, for two weeks. It was a big family. Yeah. How big of a family was that? Well, they were all... Like eight kids? There was, well, there was about ten of them then. Oh. Yeah. Oh. They had twelve kids and they, two, oh. two or three were born after they were up here. Oh. Wow. Well, wow. I say maybe... We were all in uh, Rockwood down to Madison. The Castle and Doyle, you know, the, the truck we put on, like about four and a half ton on a, on a ton and a half truck, you know, every 41 Ford truck, we had two of them at that time. We were doing logging already, and we always, uh, we drove across the lake, you know, right where the ferry goes across. Everybody was driving across. And anyway, uh, we, uh, We'd, we'd haul one load down, and then and unload it and load it up for to take it down the next morning. And that way we could uh, take it down, come back, load up a load, and take it down that same day again. Then the next day was it would work like that again, you know, for for a whole whole day in winter. We have all the wood down there, the Castle and Oil. We had so much a ton for it, six dollars a ton for black wood. And they pedal it out, you know. What were they doing? Something make you building buildings? Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, firewood. Oh, for, firewood. For fire, I see. Yeah. I see, I see. For uh, fireplaces, you know. I was thinking of it, Pedal it out by, the, by three, four pieces, you know, for a dollar. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know how they do it. Oh, yeah, I suppose. <laughs> anyway, we had to load, load it up to go in the morning, and Lawrence got up at at 5.30 and, and started out home and here, God damn it, he come back already walking, you know, he got a ride with somebody, come home and he says, we went through the ice with the truck. And <laughs> he's, he told us how it happened, you know, he drove across, you know, it was about halfway where the railroad bridge is and, and where the ferry goes. Went out, there was 47 feet of water there. And, uh, uh -huh. Did you he lose? Said, he said he drove out there, he was going in, in second gear, you know, like we always used to drive just so uh, 15, 10, 15 miles an hour. And uh, the behind right wheel started breaking down, you know, and uh, during the night the ice was 10 inches thick. And uh, anyway, it must have cracked, the ice must have cracked right along where the track was, you know, oh. at night, in a way. He was driving along and the hind right wheel started breaking, you know, it went down and it kept going and went break off in chunks like that, you know. And all at once it went right down. And uh, and he said he walked back out, but he looked at it and he thought, oh hell, we got that four wheel drive, you know, that would be a frame and the winch on at that time for logging. We'll just get a couple of planks and we'll lift it up and put nothing to it. So. He come over and he heard another crash, and the hind left wheel went down. And uh, then it sat there for a while. He washed it, and the doggone thing broke. The platform broke the width of eight feet, and it went down ass first like that. The front end was sticking up in the area, and it went down in a hole that was eight feet wide and eight feet long. Big truck. The front of the wheels rolled right back. And so you lost your there. logging truck, that was it? Yeah, it was down there, 47 feet of water. Oh my God. So how the hell are we going to get it out? So we got Russell up there, compared we had a big, had a record, you know, and a lot of cable and stuff. So in a way we had some uh, six, six, by, six by eights that were, were uh, like 10 feet long, you know. And we made some big saw horses, two, two big saw horses out of, out of that. And uh, we had put some planks down underneath where the, 
the legs were, you know. And uh, we uh, had two big telephone poles that we put across on that, then we put a chain hoist on there. Russell had a big, big chain hoist, you know. But the chain was if it wasn't high enough, we went, we hooked down. We had, we had the blacksmith make a hook like a plow beam, you know, about like that, you know. I you know, so we would put a close in there for the hook the cable on, and uh, we put that in there and hung it on, and we started hooking around, you know, and you, you could feel the truck when you had took a, we had a couple of pieces of eight foot aluminum pipe that we Weren't you afraid put together, fall away on your and it was sitting down there with the platform up, oh. you know, it wasn't hooked down, oh. and uh, on the front. And you could poke it down there and you could push the thing down and it would come up like that again, like that, right with, with, with a pipe. So we knew it was sitting on its feet, you know. And in a way we hooked down, you know, and with that hook, a pull of dragging around and we got it hooked. And we thought, boy, we're lucky, you know. So we started hoisting up and we started getting up to the top where we could see the dog on it had one of the rotors on top with a boom, you know. You could see it at the top, but you couldn't hook onto it yet, you know. And all at once it let go and went right back down. <laughs> and we found out afterward it, it was hooked underneath the front right fender. And the hook hooked right through and tore a hole through the fender. The fender was sticking up like that. <laughs> what year was this? The front right fender. It pulled it right loose, you know, and it was hanging up in the air when we got it up. So then the next, we kept working and hooking, and we, we the next, it didn't take long, but this was about 10 o'clock, we had it hooked. About another hour, we had it hooked again. And then we got it right around behind the cab, around the frame, you know, the hook. And we kept pulling it up and pulling it up, and we could see where it was hooked, you know. And then we, that was uh, the first day. And uh, then it was about 4, 4.30, it was zero below, 10 below zero every damn day. Cold, you know, it would uh, uh, water, water come up through the hole, hole, you know, and wherever you got to dive gloves wet, when we touched some iron, it stuck, stuck right on. It was that cold and the slippery, and we had a we had a, a canvas that we had cut a hole in the ice and put posts in, you know, had the canvas around here to keep the wind away, otherwise you couldn't stand it out there, ten below. And anyway. We got, uh, the second day we got it up to where we could stick a, a pole through underneath and it sat there, you know. And uh, we uh, also right away drained the, the radiator and, and the crankcase, you know, the transmission and that stuff. All the, the cab on the inside was all full of oil, transmission grease. And <sighs> that cardboard that was on the cab was all hanging down. <laughs> <laughs> All soaked, you know, all, it was a hell of a mess. All the grease all over the windshield, and it all came out of the transmission. Well, and the wood was all in the bottom of the river. Yeah, and we, Herman wanted to come over with his two wheel trailer, he got one trailer load out of the hole, the rest of the water. Dr. So, Frank Wiggy's farm, they bought a load of, of feeder cattle. From Oscar Meyer in Madison. And, and that one that, that got by all right though. Yeah, they got it went, went across. A semi load of cattle yeah. had crossed that's probably 16, why it crashed. That's Sixteen, why it cracked, yeah. 16 cattle they were like and Lawrence, like, like seven, eight hundred pounds, you know. Each. And Lawrence, did he get wet? Was he injured or no, anything? Uh -huh.